Tonight's final tale is entitled The Midnight Man, written by Redditor Vermilion Sky and read by Alex Beal. For the most part, I believe in the paranormal, but there are some things that even I was skeptical about. The Midnight Man was one of those things. I told myself that he was a joke. I even said jokingly that I'd like to meet him. I find myself regretting those words. I think I'm going to meet him soon. Last night, at about a quarter to one, I decided it would be a great time to go on a walk with my dog, Ashley. The rain had finally stopped, and she was becoming restless. As I was locking the door, I noticed that something was off. Ashley is a big, goofy golden retriever. She loves to run and play, but she was frozen at the top of the porch. Usually, she'll pull the leash so hard that I'll have trouble reaching the key to the door to lock it. This time, nothing. She might as well have been a statue. She seemed to be looking at something across the cul-de-sac. At first I thought it was a cat, a squirrel, or maybe something hiding underneath the car. After a few minutes of looking, I saw nothing. So I tugged on the leash, tried pushing her, nothing. In the end, I gave up, picked her up, and carried her into the house. As I took off my shoes and put them in the closet, I noticed that she was staring out of the living room window in the same direction she was when we were outside. That's when I started to get creeped out. There had to be something out there. I walked over to the living room and sat down on the couch. After half an hour of watching the dog, I picked up a book and started to read. Right as I started reading, Ashley started slowly moving her head as if following something. It looked like whatever she was watching was moving across the street towards my lawn. I set the book down and went up to the window. Now she was looking directly below it as if something was standing underneath. I saw nothing but the grass and the wall of the house. It's probably nothing, I thought to myself. Dogs bark and stare at random things all the time. It was probably a squirrel. It made me uneasy enough that I decided it would be best to retreat to the safety of my room. It's on the first floor, but my house is built on a hill that slopes sharply down behind it. There's a balcony outside my room, at least 20 feet from the ground. No way anything can get up there. They need a good-sized ladder or a grappling hook. I quickly walked down the hall, turning on all the lights between my room and the living room. I went back to get Ashley, who still had not moved from the spot. I was getting worried about her. I'm the type of guy that can watch a horror movie where a person will get brutally slaughtered and not bat an eye. God help me if they kill off a dog. I grabbed some doggy treats and started trying to bribe Ashley to follow me. She ignored them. So I decided that I was going to have to pick her up again and carry her to my room. I was about to when, slowly, she started walking alongside the windows, as if following someone who was walking around the house. My stomach dropped. I picked her up, sprinted to my room, and slammed my door shut, locking and barricading it with a recliner. For a few minutes, she was acting normal again, parading around the room with a toy in her mouth, nudging for me to play with her. So I did, tossing the toy across the room and having her bring it back. After the fourth throw, as she ran by the balcony doors, she stopped and started staring through the glass again. My hands began to shake, and I felt the blood drain from my face. The only thing in that direction was my balcony. I stared at her in horror, and for the first time, she looked back too. I've never seen an animal look more frightened. For a minute, we just sat there and stared at each other, both of us paralyzed with fear. And then I snapped out of it. I threw my dog onto the bed and slid my small desk in front of the balcony door. I grabbed duct tape and taped my curtains against the wall so whatever was out there couldn't see me and I couldn't see it. I knew it was pointless. Whatever was outside knew where I was, no matter what I did. I got into bed with the dog, pulled the blanket over us, and hugged her. We lay there, quivering under the blanket. Suddenly, I got that feeling again, right before silence is broken, that feeling of dread. You know it's coming, but you're too late to react, to cover your ears. Because as soon as the thought processes, it happens. Tapping. I heard tapping on my balcony door. Four taps, four fingers, one after the other. The taps started to travel along the wall, in the direction of my bed. Every time they got closer, I felt my heart beat faster and faster. Soon they were right next to my head, and I thought my heart was going to burst through my chest. And then they stopped. I could still hear my heart, still racing. And then the same feeling before the tapping started, I knew that silence was going to be broken any second now. This time, there was a faint pop. It sounded like it came from the living room. Then another and another, getting closer each time. As the pops got closer, I heard a slight fizz at the end and realized that the light bulbs were going out one by one. 
Suddenly, the recliner I had in front of my door slid across the room, the base gouging furrows into the wood floor and smashed into the desk I had barricading the balcony doors. The light bulbs in my room burst, throwing glass onto the floor, and I heard my doorway crack open. Literally, crack. It was like the door was pushed so hard that the frame splintered to let the lock through. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I saw it. A tall, dark figure in the doorway. Dressed in black, head almost touching the ceiling. It stood there for a few seconds, and then it whispered, Tomorrow night, then. I could almost hear a slight disappointment in its voice. After standing there for another few seconds, it left. I stayed in bed for a few minutes, wondering if I should move, but too afraid to try. Eventually, I got up, swept up the glass from the light bulbs, replaced them, and stayed there the rest of the night. I didn't sleep a wink last night. And now I'm wondering, is it possible to be playing the midnight game without the ritual? Without my consent? This whole thing started around midnight, and it ended at about 3 o'clock. The fact that I have been ridiculing the midnight man's existence for the past few days is probably no coincidence. Did I make him angry? Is there a way to stop this? It's noon, and I'm terrified of what might happen tonight. I think if I play the game with him and win, he might leave me alone. I'm not even sure if the rules exist at this point, but I don't know what else to do. I'm afraid. Our sleepless tales have come to an end. Close your eyes, drift off, and don't look under the bed. The No Sleep Podcast is licensed under a Creative Commons license, 2011. Some rights reserved. No sleep.